dalam rancangan antara guru dengan anak murid diberikan dalam bahasa Inggeris pada 24 hari bulan Disember 2018. The Buddha continue. It is the invisible appearance atop the summit of the thus come one. It is the spiritual mantra proclaimed by the Buddha of the unconditioned mind, who comes forth from the summit in a blaze of light and sits upon a jewel lotus flower. And now he is talking about Ananda's private life, a private.、Um, Connection with Manjusri, with that prostitute who almost corrupted him, and etc.,、uh, etc. Et so、uh, I cut that off. Oh, you want to listen as well?、Yes. I just talk about the precept here, okay? All right.、Oh, never mind. I just read it to you. What is more, your past lives with、uh, Mataji's daughter created. Accumulated cowpaths of causes and conditions, your habits of fondness and emotional love go back not just one life, nor even just one cowpath. Yet, as soon as I proclaimed it, she was free forever from the、uh, affection in her heart and accomplished a hardship. There was a prostitute who who was very very、uh, infatuated with Ananda. Because he looked very handsome, supposed to, and she always tried to seduce him. And one time, Ananda has to go through her area, her house, in order to go for arms, and he has to go to her house to beg for arms, because the Buddha don't let any monk go to the same place all the time, in order to. Avoid attachment, yeah, and discrimination between the rich and the poor, yeah, because Ananda sometimes,、uh, sometime before that, he always went to the the poor people to beg for alms because he think like this he can give merit to the poor because the poor people need more merit than the rich. <laughs> Therefore, Buddha said, "No, you don't do that. You just go every house with the same love, with the same." Blessing, yeah. You cannot discriminate and just bless just one type of people. Therefore, on that day was Ananda's turn to go to different area, including the prostitute's house. And this prostitute, she has been waiting for a long time <laughs> for Ananda. And now the Buddha explained why they had affinity with each other in Kaupas. Aeons already, and has always have return and return like this. This life is the same. But after the Buddha has explained all this, she became a heart. She also became a nun, and compete with a nun who is more enlightened, who is faster <laughs> to get enlightenment. <laughs> that was like that.、Uh, it doesn't say here, which is I, I know that from other sutra. Okay, yeah. There's、something maybe that some of you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you clapping? Because of the calendar talk? Because of my teaching? Oh, I just copied from the Buddha. <laughs> yeah, because of your teachings, Master. All your information benefits us spiritually and physically in the world. Thank you so、oh, thank much. Thank you, thank you. I just have to explain a little bit more so that you know the the background of this situation. Why the Buddha? Originally, I want to skip it. Remember,、uh, this is private thing and all that. But I thought never mind. I just read it. I thought I would read it quick, 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 quick. But then I remember this story, and then I begin talking. <laughs> Habit dies hard. Yeah, <laughs> I just have to tell you what is what. Okay then. Now, so she has accomplished a hardship. Mm, this so-called prostitute.、Mm. That prostitute, the Buddha continued. That prostitute, who had no intention of cultivating, before she met Anand, she always wanted to wait for Anand to trap him.、Mm. Uh, she was imperceptibly aided by that spiritual power, and was swiftly certified to the position beyond learning.、Oh, she's gone so fast. 
into the spiritual elevation, yeah, beyond learning. I mean, she already too enlightened. These people no need to learn anymore. Yes. Then what about you, sound hearers in the assembly, who seek the most uh, supreme vehicle and are resolved to accomplish Buddhahood? He asked, question mark. For you, it should be as easy as tossing dust into a favorable wind. What then is the problem? The Buddha man looked at the prostitute. She had no intention to practice any spiritual thing, any teaching, nothing. She was a prostitute even. It's the kind of opposite of spiritual way of life. For example, like that, the people look down upon prostitutes, they think they are nothing, they have no moral, no understanding, no concept of a decent life. In any country, people look down upon prostitutes. Even in, in such a free country, where prostitution is like a, a professional job and is illegally practiced, still people do not think well of prostitutes. Therefore, Buddha said, to the assembly of, of monks and maybe others, diva and dragon and, and lay people, he said, she has no idea of spiritual practice, no intention. And after I explained to her with my power, she became a heart. I mean, not immediately like that, but she intended to become a nun right away. And she ran to Buddha because Ananda, he almost succumbed to her charm. And then he prayed to the Buddha, please help me, Master, help me. Because she was already pinning him down like on the bed or something and she was beginning her job and <laughs> he was already almost gone. But then he remembered the Buddha, said, please help me, please help me. And then the Buddha used his transformation body or sent somebody. And then Ananda immediately can escape, or awaken, like as if from a dream, and then he run back to the Buddha. And this uh, Mantaji's daughter, <laughs> the prostitute, run behind. So she was running <laughs> after Ananda, <laughs> and both of them arrived in front of the thirst come one. And then she said, give me back my man. I want him, I want him, I love him. <laughs> Return him to me. <laughs> she uh, complained to the Buddha. He already mine. Uh, why you take him back? Uh, give it back to me, okay? And then Buddha said, okay, calm down. W what is it about Ananda that you like him so much? She think about it and say, oh, uh, I, I like his eyes, yeah. She couldn't say anything. It's too much in love, too much, you know, very uh, already too intoxicated in her physical desire and love for Ananda. This is because of karma in the past lives. You see that? Okay. She cannot help herself. She cannot. Of all the men that she she knew in the past and that up to that moment, she cared about nobody. Prostitutes, they do business. They don't fall in love, nothing but only Ananda she likes, and whom she's in love with, a monk. <laughs> That's the problem. So the, she, she said to, to the Buddha, I love Ananda's eyes. He said, oh, no, these eyes, oh, it's uh, full of, you know, uh, ugly things that come out, the white stuff sometimes come out, the tears running down, and, and if he's sick, all oh, these pools coming out, you don't want this, his eyes. So she said, I, I like his, his nose. She said, then she said, I love his nose. <laughs> because the Buddha asked, what's the reason you like him? What is it about him? I said, I love his nose now. He said, no, 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 you don't want that. Oh, there's all kind of things that come in now, you know. When he blow the nose, oh, all this sticky stuff. Oh, oh, ugly, ugly, oh, you don't want like that. And then she said, <laughs> I like his mouth. <laughs> and the Buddha also continued to tell her that, oh, no, 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 you don't want that. There's all this, uh, you know, phlegm coming out sometime, and then the saliva is full of germs in the earth. Oh, no, no, this is a thing that you should not like. And continue further, further, until she has no more reason <laughs> to like him. Yeah, the ears and whatever. She said the Buddha just flattened it out for her. 
Then after a while, then she realizes it is uh, not <laughs> truly <laughs> a favorable thing, you know, this kind of uh, physical, sexual love. So okay, then she uh, asked the Buddha to accept her as a disciple. She awakened, and then to become a nun even. And after that, she became a heart in no time. She competed with a nun <laughs> to see who, who is faster become a heart. And she, she became first before him, supposed to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's not because uh, Ananda was slower or less spiritual. It's just his destiny to serve the Buddha first, okay? And to try to remember everything the Buddha said in the assembly or whatever happened in the assembly on all the spiritual uh, stories that happened within the Buddha's assemblies and disciples. Just like nowadays you have miracle uh, events, you know, miracle stories and all that. Before there was no record player, yeah? So somebody has to write it down or memorize it all. Ananda was, that was his job, you see? If he became Buddha too quickly, maybe he could not do this, yeah? Because he will lose his intellectual power, memory, uh, so that he can become more pure, become Buddha. So he has to continue to be so-called a little ignorant until after Buddha passed away. Yeah, after Buddha passed away, he became enlightened immediately and became a hut, okay, and become one of the successor. Uh, I was telling you that whatever good for the world, uh, good for other people, then I would do it no matter what. So I'm just new like you here, and I forgot that. I totally halfway forgot. Now I continue that. Uh, Buddha, uh, please wait. I come back to you. They have prepared for me a room, you know, on the second floor. Uh, more comfortable, of course, with aircon. You know, it was a VIP kind of room, and they put all the some of the thing I need already there. Yeah, but when I first came here, the, immediately I say I don't stay in any of these rooms. I stay up on the roof. Just put me a tent up there, and I'll be fine. I like it. Okay, I like like a tent in the open air and put me a kitchenette there with something in case I need to have some, sometimes I don't like solid food, I just want to cook a little soup, rice soup or something. So that's what they did. But then they continue working until, uh, until before we begin our retreat. So I had to put up um, with the uh, second floor of the room, okay? And then it becomes so comfortable. <laughs> After you live there for a few days, you have aircon, hot, cold, whenever you want, and the uh, unsuit bathroom, toilet, and everything already put there for you, special shampoo, and special conditioner, and good smelling soap, oh, it's already nice, and bubble bath. Ah, oh, then I continue to stay, stay, stay. <laughs> I didn't want to leave. <laughs> This morning, uh, I forgot, and then I asked the heavens again, okay, I'm too tired to check it out, tell me. Is it still better that I go upstairs, better for the people, or is it better I continue to stay here, which is comfortable? I didn't ask for it, you know, make an excuse for myself. I didn't ask for people did it for me, you see, I did not ask. <laughs> so, is that maybe... <laughs> Maybe heaven's will that I should stay here. Comfort, comfort. <laughs> it goes upstairs on the roof only. Only a tent, a big tent. With a table, you know, to work. It's actually like a prepared, like an office. And a sofa, okay? No aircon. Just a, maybe a heater, small one. Or empty, okay? And later on, I came back and I saw the mosquito screen all around. It's like a room again. I said, oh, no. Oh, no, terrible. I don't want that. I just want a tent. Okay, and all around empty. I like that. It's not like screen all in with door and all that. Even though it's just a mosquito door, I don't like it. And this is one more excuse for me to continue to stay in the comfortable aircon. I already made all the clothes beautiful hanging. Easy for me to, to do anything, so easy. 
So another excuse to stay. That's why I keep staying a few more days and I didn't think about the roof anymore. Besides, they took away all my kitchenette stuff. Another excuse, okay? What should I do up there? I don't have anything to cook. No pan, no pot, no, no cooking stoves, no uh, bowls, no uh, spoon. I keep listing it, you know? You see that? I have nothing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, our minds like comfort, yeah? Even I like comfort, yeah? especially when you're older, you know? You have air con, it's warmer for your back, and it doesn't stiffen your legs, and all kind of excuses I have. Yeah, yeah. And, but then I suddenly, this morning, I was thinking, oh, maybe just a trick. I should go upstairs because that's my instinct. The first day I came, I said, I don't stay in any rooms. The room has been sleep in by people and used for years, you know, decades already. I should not stay there, even though I throw all the beds out already. Just have a new sofa in and an uh, office at, at the table and all the office stuff or document to work. So it just looked like an um, office. One sofa and a table, empty chair like that. It's not much. And it was okay too, comfortable. Because uh, they normally use it just for bedrooms. Are you coming? You just see the big bed. <laughs> Nothing else. And it feels suffocating. I, I don't like it because the room is already small. If you put a bed in there, you can't do anything else. Even you put a chair or something in it, feel, <laughs> it feels too crowded. So I throw all the beds out anyway already, and it's more comfortable. But this morning, suddenly, I wake up and say, oh no, maybe it's not too good to continue to stay here because I feel too relaxed. It's a relaxing room. It's a rest area, and my mind will not be set on working. <laughs> it's the atmosphere in the bedroom. It always make you feel relaxed and want to sleep, rest, you know. Ay, ay, ay. Especially when I didn't ask for it, you know. Maybe heaven's will, you know. <laughs> uh, this morning I asked. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm too lazy to move again, all my things up upstairs again. Uh, but okay, what is better for my work, okay, for the world? And they say, move, <laughs> leave this room. <laughs> I say, what, really? Repeat again. <laughs> <laughs> so they say, leave the room. <laughs> uh, it's better, okay, better for you, my work, yeah? So immediately I left, immediately, at that minute. Yeah, I don't want to further arguing with my mind. I know it is the right thing. It's my first impression anyway, and my first I wanted to do that. My ten is still up there, okay? And uh, so I move uh, whatever necessary. I couldn't move the whole thing yet because there are clothing. And, uh, but I move the symbolic of work, like computer, yeah, telephone, uh, bathroom stuff, uh, you know? Uh, toothbrush and stuff like that, and uh, and a blanket, yeah. So that is already a symbol of my new life, <laughs> a new area. It's all the necessity, and there's some clothes, yeah. So it's okay. The mind can trick you mm, for comfort. I really feel very comfortable in that room. Often. I can't sleep very well, but in that room I sleep so well and I feel peaceful there. That's why I didn't want to leave. I thought it's heaven's will. <laughs> Blaming it on heaven. It's not true. Sometimes a comfortable place doesn't mean a good place. Okay? You might not have peace at the end. Not peace within yourself only, but peace with other coordinating people. If you stay in one bedroom, for example, and to work from your bedroom, if you have no choice, and you have to, but if you have choice, you should separate your work and your sleeping area. Now, feng shui wise, it's like that. Because your sleeping area is your sleeping area. And if you work from there, people don't cooperate with you. It's just naturally, because uh, you order from your bedroom. Your bedroom is supposed to be your sleeping area, resting area. It's not for working. So at home, if you don't have more room, you have to put aside one corner for working, okay? Yeah, and when you finish work, you just shut that down. And if you can, you put a curtain or something, okay? Put something separate or some plants. 
so that you have more efficiency in your work. There are more of this kind of cooperation between colleagues. Of course, I was too comfortable. I even forgot all about feng shui or whatever shui that was. <laughs> it just feels so good. Sleep well, you know, eat good. <laughs> oh, for a long time, for a change. I was really reluctant to leave. Imagine that. A supreme master and all. Oh, <laughs> still like the bedroom. <laughs> all right. But I moved immediately as long as heaven reminds me for what purpose. I was here, I said, okay, just a few days. Good excuse, yeah, take a rest. Okay, forgive me, <laughs> weakness <laughs> of the body and mind. <laughs> so I'm not always tough as you think, huh? I also love comfort, yeah, and uh, how you say, security, yeah. In the, in the second floor with the bedroom is more secure because there are iron doors, you know, locks and everything. The roof don't have any like that. But I have tried to fix it so that I can lock from my side. Normally they put lock all, only from the inside, okay? The roof supposed to be the outside. So every lock, every door is locked from inside, not on my side, the roof. So this uh, day I moved up and I have tried to nail this and that and <laughs> making some arrangements so that I can lock from my side just so that I can feel a little bit psychological safety. I had to do that wherever I go, so that I feel peace of mind. Huh? Good, now you know my secret, my uh, attachment secret to the bed and comfortable and the aircon. Yeah, now I have nothing, <laughs> just a tent, no aircon up there. <laughs> Yeah, what for you have an aircon? It's all open air anyway. <laughs> the aircon will not work. But after a while, I get used to it also. You know, you will not feel that cold. It'll be okay. Just put more clothes on then. Huh? If it's cold. It's good like that. So I can have more sympathy with you also, who lives in the outdoor tent and stuff like that. Huh? So I don't be too comfy huh? and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> 